We're gonna find it. <laughs> With your skin, dude. It says two minutes away. What is it? Luke? An app that detects your intent and points you to real life locations that correspond to that intention. Sounds like a load of BS, right? You'd think, except when thousands of people say they've made discoveries and have had experiences that seem to corroborate, is it really BS? Or is there actually something to this app? Let's take a look at Randonautica. In early 2020, the app Randonautica was released on iOS and Android and caught major traction on social media. This app would take your intent and using your location would direct you to a point within a designated radius that apparently relates to what you're looking for. We're navigating. Let's go. We're gonna find it. <laughs> We're gonna find it, dude. Oh, we find something. Online, people have been sharing their adventures and what they've been finding, which is why it's become a fairly popular trend on platforms like TikTok and YouTube and the discoveries all vary widely. It's kind of what's been keeping people engaged. Just looking over at the Randonaut subreddit, you can find things like wild animals, beautiful landscapes, literal signs from the universe, glitches in the matrix, money, one user found a cat in a storm drain, every manner of thing. It all kind of depends on the user's intent. But it's pretty far in there, dude. This is what we came here for, dude. <laughs> I think somehow we got further away. We have to go in. Do you have to go up? Oh my goodness. However, what happens when someone's intent isn't necessarily positive? What if their intent is something strange or something creepy? This is where things get more interesting. It certainly wasn't what the app was specifically designed for. I'm sure it wasn't the creator's intent. But after several users started posting their creepy findings, it kind of piqued people's morbid curiosities. And now, the most popular results when you search on YouTube are all creepy videos. Why did we just go to this fucking quantum point and this whole fucking person is... Sky. Oh. And finally, the app gained even more notoriety in June 2020, after a group of teens in Seattle were randonauting and led to a suitcase that contained human remains. In the suitcase and the surrounding area were the bodies of two individuals who were killed by gunshot. The police investigation is currently ongoing. So what's the deal with this app? At the end of the day, is it really just a series of coincidences? I mean, for every exciting and interesting randonaut discovery, there's bound to be many more who simply found nothing, right? And how does the app even work? What does randonauting even mean? Well, the term and idea of randonauting actually predates the app and is derived from research from the Fatum Project. The idea behind the Fatum Project, I honestly don't think I could fully describe nor understand the complete concept, but it's to explore the areas outside predetermined probability tunnels, changing our reality and going somewhere truly random. This could lead to unpredictable and interesting results. Most people in their regular day-to-day -day have a set routine. They do the same things, they go to the same places. There's always a level of predictability. Even if you're going to try that new restaurant that you've never eaten at, though you've never been there before, you've still heard of it. Simply because of that, it enters the table of probability. So no, it's not random. In fact, if you try yourself to go somewhere random on your own, even if you tried, you still have the same habits, same tendencies, your actions still wouldn't be random. So the idea is to use an external tool such as the Randonautica app, and using quantum RNG and coordinates, it can lead you somewhere truly random. Okay, but why are people discovering things that seem to line up with their intent? I mean, RNG and coordinates, quantum points, at the end of the day, these are just numbers and figures, and they can be quantified, but intent, that's a much more difficult thing to measure. Now, I don't want to speak with a broad brush, and I do love keeping an open mind, but you can definitely make the argument that there's some psychology that may play a significant role here. You see, while the app gives you the location, you provided the answer for what you're looking for yourself there's an unconscious search that starts once something enters your conscious. 
You already have the answer, you're simply looking for evidence that supports it. This is called confirmation bias. Couple that with the added curiosities that inherently arise simply as a result of being somewhere new, somewhere random, and it's no surprise that even if you don't find something front page worthy, you'll still find something interesting. I mean, just take a look around you right now. Odds are you can find things that could match any number of intentions. What is it? What? Oh shit, what's up there? It's like a bear cave, dude. The term intent, I think, is very deliberate, as it's a very broad term, it's not specific, and intentions will mean different things to different people. I think the real reason behind it, I believe, is so that the app is more than, hey, go to this random point. The app never would have taken off had that been the case, but instead, it's go to this point and observe. Like, really observe your surroundings, because you're probably around interesting things all the time, but you never really notice. And honestly, that's what I kind of like about the idea of randonauting. So long as you're not trespassing, not breaking any laws, the idea is to get out and go somewhere you've never been before, and just take it in. And I don't see that as being anything but a good thing. Just, you know, steer clear of the crazies. You guys, I think that's the end of our randonaut journey. <laughs> I think it was a worthwhile use of our time. It was quite the exciting journey. Hey guys, so I've just been editing this video, and uh, I noticed something a little bit strange just while looking at some of the footage and playing everything back. Uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on like rando nodding and the weird things that people have found, and I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't. It's probably nothing. Who knows? It's just a noise. Uh, but uh, in the footage, in some of the footage where we're walking through the the woods there over at White Cliff Park in West Vancouver, there is like this screeching noise that happens like at the same time as I'm talking, and no, it's not my voice. Um, here, I'm gonna play it for you guys now. Oh, it's taking us through the woods, dude. So what the hell was that? Taking us through the woods, dude. Taking us through the woods, dude. So I don't know what that is. It could be nothing. I don't know if there was something in the background, like I didn't notice anything while we were recording. Cause it's pretty loud too, like like I was the one holding the camera at this point, so my voice I feel like would have been very loud, but this was just like as loud as my voice. So it was kind of strange. And uh yeah, I just thought I'd point it out because I thought it was kind of interesting. Um let me know what you guys think of it, and thanks so much for watching this video. Peace out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this one. Peace. I never have to leave my house to make a video, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's brutal. Yo, Ben. Yo. Those are not hiking shoes, dude. <laughs> yeah, because these are hiking feet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Different intention? You pick something else? Something weird, dude. What do you think it's gonna be? I'm gonna go in the water. Face the camera to you.